What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included and we are straight back to where we left off in the hopes that you have come back to see what happens. So just chucking in the radiant pipes now. Of course I'm using insulated pipe, not normal pipe elsewhere to make sure that the heat only dissipates over the generators. The generators will eat the heat very well if it's near them. Now you can use temp shift plates as well, which do work very well, but in this instance I think we need to just try this. So get the radiant pipes in, let's just jump ahead to them getting finished. So they're finished now and I managed to chuck in some hydrogen gas as well, not much but enough to hopefully help dissipate the heat. The temp shift plates are there as well now don't build them like I have you need at least one block gap between each one it's how they work efficiency wise but for now let's see so you can see it's going into that first chamber there is now a insulated wall on that left hand side with the doors just to make sure they can get in and fix anything that breaks should it overheat uh, looking at it now though we're going up to the third level So we're going up to, yeah, they're going through the ninth generator at the minute. The generators are kicking in. But it's looking good. It is looking very good. Up to that top line, and you can see it's now down to 15 degrees. So we have, in fact, eradicated all of the heat from that liquid and it's now coming back at around 12 degrees of course don't cool it down too much um, if you freeze it it will damage as well now the good thing about the thermostat generators is they stop at 10 degrees so they'll never go down to the, that the, the cold enough they'll never get the water cold enough to freeze so even even better it's then put that back in the machine the machine is then throwing out more steel and out it comes at 85 degrees 29 is that degrees for the steel so that's not bad going into the base it's not 80 odd degrees that's good that's because obviously it's coming out into those the hydrogen which is ripping the heat out of that and putting it into them generators but as we stand that is done we now have the process completed and i'm happy to say that it's actually working for a change unlike asteroid number two we're going to send him back he's not having a great time he's injured uh, unhappy, you name it, it's it's just not worth it. We will come back when we've got a bit more time. Again, as I said, the home asteroid, I've got a few projects to do and a bit of cleaning up to do and symmetry to fix because it's got a bit on the wonk and I don't like my base on the wonk. So we will fix that and then get somebody back over there. In the meantime, Gosman straight on to the room that is literally what it's there for. That's 70 odd percent stress. Gonna sit there and get a massage now until they are happy, and then of course they'll get back to whatever it is that their job was, which I think was tidying and plumbing. There's a lot of lag with uh, the heat map, but there is a lot of heat changing hands, especially with all these generators. This is coming down nicely now. I think another couple of cycles, and I'm just gonna rip that out. It's down to about 500 degrees, so it's working as intended. Again, the generators are proving to do exactly what they need to do. It's just how many do you need to do the task in hand. Natural gas up here. We can move that geyser to anywhere we like, really. But I'll try and chuck some generators next to it and get some free energy from there. Free energy, of course, because it's gas that we haven't had to create. Uh, but as soon as that's used up, which it does use it quite quickly... We'll, of course, then need to, I don't know, I think last season we had a really good setup with the natural gas, but we had three of them uh, geysers running the power, three of those, and I don't think one's going to cut it. But I'm just going to cut cut in a temp, uh, template here. Template? No, no. I don't know what you call it, the uh, over the wall, so that we can get this main cable, the main base cable from the power spine over there. And we'll take that directly into the natural gas generators and bring that back into the base. That will be running all the time. I'm not going to automate it or anything. I'm just going to let it use whatever gas it's got. And if it 
fills up and means that the coal generators don't have to run. That is fantastic. I'm not convinced that will happen though, because I don't think there is enough natural gas to do that. Yet. So this is my rough setup. Of course, remember the generators drop polluted water as they run. Uh, and some heat. The polluted water we can chuck in here. Or we can just drop it into the... The room below, actually, would be easier. Just marking out. Although they're not going to be able to get anywhere near this without a lot of uh, ladders scaffolding. It just shows... Or reminds me that that's where that needs to go to so it matches those others just to make things look nice and tidy we do need to get in there in order to get a pump set up and some piping i want to try and do it there without letting the gas come out now the gas in there which is very orange as you can see is very high pressure because it's been trapped so as soon as we burst a hole in it we will that will start to be released obviously when i put that brick there many many moons ago with the scaffolding uh, it must have been either it got loose or it's uh, it wasn't as high pressure then but it is now certainly in fact I don't think the geyser can erupt because the pressure is too high the generators also give off carbon dioxide gas so I'm just going to chuck that out into the abyss of the world I'm not really interested in it once we've started building out the base, the outside, we're not going to turn it into a vacuum because that would be too much hassle. But if we can turn it into micrograms, that'd be great. Okay, so I've done that. Jumped ahead a little bit. You, 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 you've seen it before, right? It's it's a pump. <laughs> it's a pump, a, ca a power cable, and some gas pipe. Now, I didn't think about this, but yeah, they're overpressuring on the carbon dioxide on the outside. So I need to upgrade those to be high pressure vents to make sure it doesn't back up. It's already running low, though. So as I said, it's running, what, sort of three or, f three or four of the five generators, but not consistently and not efficiently. But my piping is not efficient anyway. As you can see, there's some trap there on the very left one, which is running constantly, and the very right one, the three in between, are getting very minute amounts of gas. So my setup's not great. A uh, bit, of, bit of gas there, but that comes from the oil reservoirs, which you can do that when you cap them. Now, again, that will be something I'm going to do. Uh, and when I cap them all, because I think I've seen at least... Four, I think, oil reservoirs. So I'm going to cap them all together, all in the same room. Again, controlling the heat with the generators and then the gases that's produced I can use as power. The heat I will use as power and the oil I'll turn into petroleum, which I can use for plastic and rocket fuel. Coming back over here to look at the generator there, sorry, the refinery there for the, the metals. Both of them seem to be running well. Everything seems to be in check. Now, there's 15. Is it 15? 3, 6, 9, 12. Yeah, 15 of those thermostatic generators running the steel. You will get away with 12 as long as you use the hydrogen as I am to dissipate the heat. You will be fine with 12. I've used 15 just to fill the gap because there was th that space would have been left otherwise and it was annoying me. So that's why I went for 15. Everybody's certainly a lot happier when they're using Atmo suits to go out there. There is a lot of polluted oxygen out there. A lot. All of that we can clean into clean oxygen and clay. Okay, so coming back, I have actually... In I've doubled up these rooms, as you can see. This is my magic idea. Will it work? I do not know. So we've got two there, you can see. Two of the Draco rooms. And then above, I've built two more again. But I'm actually going to try and cheese it a little bit. So instead of having the two rooms for the two different Draco types, I'm going to have the two rooms. The left one, you can see, has the drop-off and the shearing machine in. The right one only has... You can see it's worked there. It only has the uh, cuddle machine thing. So it basically makes them both farms. Now, with them doors open, they still count as a wall, a barrier. So they are both showing as less than 96 tiles. 
but they are still ranchers. The one on the right has a lot more food. And with the doors open in the middle there, the Drekos that will be dropped off on that left-hand side can use both rooms, still remain in, tamed because they're still in ranchers, and they get a lot of extra food in order to eat. If this works, it will allow us to have many more critters with m much more food. The first thing I've got to do, though, as you can see, where I said there was a lot of polluted... There's like nine kilo. I don't know where it's come from. There must have been... There's so much uh, polluted water on this map that I've got a crap ton. And again, that's my scientific term. Of polluted oxygen. So what I'm going to do here is chuck these down, get them running. They will then give me a really big... Uh, usually it's about five to six tiles tall band of clean oxygen. And again, that will be the same six seven eight nine kilos worth of oxygen i'll then pump that and use it for the base uh, which will diminish the fact that i'm actually running out of algae again we haven't digged up the, the entire map but until i get to that we're running out of algae which means we're going to run out of oxygen so i'll pump this all into the base uh, and eventually i'd like to do a couple more tiers because there is a lot of polluted oxygen therefore there is a lot of free oxygen we can use here We'll also get a, a crap ton of clay, and that clay can be used to make ceramics, and the ceramics can be used to make heat-proof items. That's usually what I use it for anyway, because of course ceramic is very safe against heating, which is why you will see anything in terms of foundries, crafting, actually real-life um, crucibles are all made out of ceramic. So I blocked the calling line up that I made for the farm uh, because I left the, the, the pump on. So just getting this, well, anyone really, to go up and drain, say, five or six of the pipes, just like that. We'll get little cast gas canisters down on the floor. I'm not bothered about them, though. The fact that now there is a gap means the whole thing will rotate. And again, this will just continuously run over and over again. Not losing anything and cooling down that farm. Now, I do need to raise that up. Because as you can see, my new farm that I've just built also has mealwood growing. And I want to make sure that doesn't get hot as well. Because the Drekos do give off a lot of heat. So I'm going to shut down or rip out the pipe going through here. Because to be honest, I'm not that bothered. It's got the thermometer in there that means that when it gets up to twenty, sorry, 60 degrees, it stops it. As you can see, uh, I don't need to cool it. As long as they get lullabied reasonably regularly, they'll hatch pretty much whenever we need to. And my idea is actually that I'm going to take that incubator out of there altogether and use it for something else. We know we've got plug slugs, plug slugs coming. I'm not entirely sure what they branch off to become. Uh, I would also like to try some of the other critters as well. Nobody in comments have said much yet about what you want to see. Uh, but there is a lot of other morphs. Especially with the mods that we've got installed for the slicksters, the slugs, the... Whatever the fox looking things are called. I can never remember because I don't use them. They're usually used for planting seeds I think. But I don't ever do that. I don't know. But yeah, you can see there. I'm just going to chuck in then another line. Same line, they'll go round, back into there, and then up to the top, cool down, rinse, and repeat. Once it starts getting cold enough to the point where it's a problem, I'll automate it. But until then, because gas is very slow at transferring the heat, I'm confident that we should have many, many cycles where this will just work and not cause us to freeze everything. It's looking good now. The crops are growing nicely, so they're ready for when we move in the Drekos. We are waiting, as you can see, the pumps are in there for a totally different reason. That is to get rid of that polluted oxygen that's trapped in there. But there is a lot, so we need to get that moved over. As soon as most of that is out, I will then wire in some hydrogen from a hydrogen tank. I've got plenty stored. And carbon dioxide for the bottom level, which will then push the hydrogen up to the top nicely. You can see they're moving them now, and it doesn't hurt to move them now, because all they need to do is eat mealwood to lay the eggs that I want. And mealwood is there so it won't hurt as soon as the the vacuum starts to occur and the, the, obviously the pumps do their job uh, I will then get some plumbing in for the hydrogen and carbon dioxide 
You can see them, they are actually working. They are going over a lot. So you can see them have gone onto that right hand side. Now, of course, while they're on that right hand side, the only negative I can think of at the minute is that they won't be sheared because they would have to be on the left hand room in order for the shear to count. It doesn't count for both rooms. Yes, I could build one on the right hand side as well, but I'd rather have the extra food. They can still be cuddled or groomed. Groomed, there you go, I remembered. Groomed because the machine is in that room. It has to be to make it an actual ranch. So, um, But yeah, I think this is working. Let me know your thoughts, what you think about this. Of course, it's not an issue if you've got vanilla where you're only allowed five of them anyway, but playing with these large, massive farms, there just wasn't enough food in the room to, to keep that many ranches alive ranchers critters alive and of course you can double this up right you can triple it up you can do it as many times as you like as long as you know that the critters are going to get to the shearing station enough that you actually get the crop without wasting it that's great if not just put a shearing station in at least you're getting the two four six eight ten eleven or so tiles on the very floor that's always available as food I do have a bug. Uh, the the two duplicates that are stuck in there on that top right hand side, for some reason I don't know why, but the the farming tiles, the hydroponics tiles, count as invisible, annoyingly, so they can't get across there. If you relog, it will fix it, but at the minute I can't be bothered because I'm trying to do other things. Also, get rid of that feeder as well because that's no use for Drecos. They don't eat the grub; they eat the plant itself not the fruit it produces. Getting some sweepers in as well to automate as much as I can. The the, the crap phosphorite, I believe it is, so that'll pick up that. And any of the, as soon as they uh, get sheared and the plastic is dropped, it will get that as well. And just in general, anything, it just cleans up the base a bit and it just saves me having to rely on my duplicates to do things that they just don't seem to be very good at doing, which is cleaning up. So you can see now the crops are all showing that they're having a bad time. That's because the atmosphere is too low because I've ripped out all of that polluted oxygen. And then above there you can see we've got a nice big stack of clean oxygen as well from the filters that we did at the start of the episode. I now need to get two things in here. The first one being the, the sweepers and the belt loaders, or the rail loaders, to get the goods out of there with the sweepers. And then we need to get the gas line in to get the hydrogen in to allow them to grow the tiles that they need. The scales, sorry. And more importantly, the carbon dioxide that will allow the plants to continue to grow and flourish. They have all been turned off, so then ones that you can see there that are fully grown. Although they look dead, as soon as carbon dioxide goes in there, they'll come back to life again. Now down here is our tanks, it's not that one that's polluted oxygen, I think this one, which is about three quarters full, is where our hydrogen is. I have used it for the, the refinery room that you saw, obviously. Uh, I do delete the pipe though when I've done it, because it's, it's, it's minging, I'm sorry, but I just can't have uh, random pipes all over the place. I like to keep it as tidy as possible, one, so I get the resources back, but two so that when I actually build a permanent pipe, I'm not having to jump over loads of things. So here you can see I'm just going to wrap this round. Like so. I don't know why I just didn't go over the top there. It was overly complicated. But anyway, just get this pipe in, get it over to there, and then some vents and a bit of automation hopefully should fix it. So just getting some knot gates in now, because of course what we want to happen is when there is hydrogen on the second tile down, to close the vent to not let any more hydrogen in two tiles at the top of hydrogen is enough plus two tiles at the top means that the two below it because the floors are four high the plants will grow if the plants the millwood are in hydrogen they will not grow so the top two needs to be hydrogen the the, the, the bottom two needs to be carbon dioxide and then the whole bottom of that section the bottom four tiles will be carbon dioxide now the easiest way to do it is to throw hydrogen in of course it loves to be at the top because it's the lightest gas then you over pressure with the carbon dioxide until you get that nice bead of two layers of hydrogen at the top at that point you should be set to go as long as your 
critters are on the ceiling, they are growing their scales. Though, if they're not, they of course aren't. But over time, it will work. And if you've got loads of them, they're always walking. As you can see, they're always moving. We are at time, though, so I am going to end the episode here. Uh, next episode, you will see the final and finished product. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please like. Any comments are welcome. As always, subscribe for more. Take care. Goodbye.